What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is April 30th of 2018. Well folks, today I want to spend some time to talk about a larger topic in the cryptocurrency space and that is no other than the current state and controversy surrounding Bitcoin Cash, the fourth largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization. Now, I don't think you need me to tell you this, guys. If you spend any time on Twitter, YouTube, or any other form of social media, you know that any time the topic of Bitcoin Cash is brought up, that there's a state of controversy, where it pretty much ends up, instead of having rational discussion, that people just start hurling Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Core, or Bcash, Bcash, Bcash at one another, just trying to piss one another off. And to be fair, I don't really think this is leading towards anything productive, and I'm not really gonna settle for it here on the Datadash channel. So because of that, I want to come to you today and take the opposite approach, actually bringing about a general discussion as to where Bitcoin Cash is right now and sharing my personal opinion on the pros and cons of the teams, uh, the team as well as the miners' decisions to take Bitcoin Cash forward and where it stands comparative to Bitcoin or Bitcoin Core as some people would state it as. So without further ado, let's go ahead and spend some time talking about it. I'm going to probably ramble on a little bit. It's not really structured, guys, but I want to go ahead and start off simply by talking about why I want to discuss this. Why am I putting it ahead of other topics in the cryptocurrency space? Well, it's not only a large topic of discussion, guys. Clearly, it's still maintained as a discussion over the past few months. But along with that as well, many people have asked me why Bitcoin Cash has continued to move up in valuation. We've started to see not only an increase comparative to its dollar valuation, but as well towards Bitcoin, going all the way up from 9 million Satoshis all the way to around 15 to 16 million Satoshis. So this is definitely a good leap over the past few weeks. And I want to spend some time uh, to talk about more of the broader stuff, but also share some reasons why the price might be up. Now, there are a few reasons as to why Bitcoin Cash might be up. Again, keep in mind that it could just be buyers coming in and the volume pushing up the price, but some people rumor that this might have to do with Gavin Anderson and Jeff Garzik, some of the more legacy developers in the space, coming in in support of Bitcoin Cash or working towards updates for the Bitcoin Cash network. And a lot of that as well might be Bitmain going about the decision, being one of the largest miners, to uh, burn some of the fees that are collected out of each block that it mines on the Bitcoin Cash network. There's a lot of smaller reasons that this might happen, or it might just be the fact that we're hitting an altcoin cycle and optimism might be returning to Bitcoin Cash as an alternative. But again, these are some sound reasons, but at the same time, I don't really think any of these solely alone are the reason the price is up. I have more of a feeling that this is just more of the altcoin cycle where there's some risk taking coming in, especially after the decline of Bitcoin Cash over the past few months. So now that we've made this kind of clear, guys, we talked a little bit about the price. I want to talk a little bit more on fundamentals because that's what this video is really about. And I don't want to get towards slinging controversy and insults towards one another. One of the big things that a lot of people see as possibly uh, a reason for a price increase of Bitcoin Cash was the announcement made in early April that there's going to be a new fork on the network where they're going to upgrade the block size from 8 megabytes where it currently stands to 32 megabytes. So for those of you who don't know, Bitcoin Cash stands at a big difference between Bitcoin because Bitcoin still sits at a 1 megabyte block size with SegWit activated, meaning that it can reach around at peak adoption around 4 megabytes worth of transaction size, whereas Bitcoin Cash can produce double of that by having a block size with no seg, uh, with blocks with no SegWit activation, as well as an eight megabyte block size. So. As we go down here, this is really the big push here, guys. They talk a little bit about some new developments that are relatively exciting. It depends on where you stand about uh, re-enabling uh, OP codes or uh, operational codes for the Bitcoin Cash Network. And this is a topic for another time, but it pretty much allows some more utility, some slight smart contract feasibility on the Bitcoin Cash Network when in regards to certain transactions. But the big update here that I want to spend some time to talk about is the block size increase. So a lot of people uh, have a big controversial opinion over scalability through block size. Some people believe that it should be the optimal solution for scaling Bitcoin because we've done it in the past and it's worked and it hasn't compromised the network to this date. And some people also argue that it is going to centralize Bitcoin, that it's going to cut out nodes who have uh, fully validated nodes, full copies that are up to date of the ledger for Bitcoin, and that it's going to centralize the network and leave the network vulnerable to many manipulation. This is a debate that is going to go on for a very long time. And at different levels of scaling and block size, it is a different argument where stances have more viability comparative to one another. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and share my opinion on this before I talk about my belief on the raise of eight megabytes to 32 megabytes. I wanna make it clear that raising block size to two, four, or eight megabytes, guys, is, to at least my knowledge, again, I'm no developer, but to my knowledge, is not going to centralize the Bitcoin network. And this is due, uh, this kind of worry is due to, I think, a very big misconception in the community that most nodes uh, run simply as nodes on the network. And this is relatively far from the truth. Many people who run mining operations on the Bitcoin network, the people who validate transactions, also have fully valid copies of the ledger, otherwise known as fully validated nodes. These are the people who really secure the network. And these individuals who run fully validated nodes spend 5,000, 10,000, or hundreds of thousands of dollars on mining equipment on a yearly basis. They buy Bitmain miners. And at the same time, I think it's silly to say that if we were to increase uh, the block size to two megabytes or four megabytes, um, you know, whatever it is, it could be, you know, even double digit megabytes that they can't go out of their way to spend a few extra 50, 100 or $200 on a few extra terabytes to keep up with the ledger. I honestly don't think there's any economic downside to this and that it's going to really cut out any of those very important fully validated nodes on the network and lead to any kind of serious centralization of nodes or any central points of failure. So because of that, I defend Bitcoin Cash on the idea that when we were reaching uh, $40 transaction fees and waiting for segwit, uh, you know, full SegWit adoption on the Lightning Network to be created, that we should have increased block size to at least two megabytes. It was silly to think that at a moment that $40 fees were rational to any regard. So this is my big stance in defense of Bitcoin Cash and the community who believes that block size increasing would be a good move for scaling Bitcoin to a degree. This is where I have to stand at a point of controversy though for Bitcoin Cash and where I'm gonna go ahead and claim that the moment, uh, the movement they're taking it, uh, the direction they're taking it right now is not the smart direction and it seems like their priorities are misplaced. And that is raising block size from eight megabytes to 32 megabytes. This is really the big part of the new fork that's coming, the new upgrade that's coming onto the Bitcoin Cash network. And the reason I find it silly is because the blocks aren't even close to being eight megabytes. That means we're not fitting in enough transaction volume, enough data to fill those eight megabytes, nowhere near the eight megabyte limit. And I can go ahead and prove it to you. I'll put it in a really good visual way. Dogecoin has more transactions than Bitcoin Cash. Now, I wanna make it clear that I understand Dogecoin probably isn't being used for commerce as much as Bitcoin Cash is. But no matter if it's transactional fees for trading cryptocurrencies, or using it as a peer-to-peer -peer digital currency, it is very clear that Bitcoin Cash is nowhere near the eight megabyte block size limit that it has established. And there's a reason you don't wanna raise block size unless you really need it. And that is because there's a block reward tied to each block. If miners are not filling in the full capacity of a block, it's pretty obvious that they probably shouldn't be receiving a full block reward unless they're getting close to serving the full capacity of that block. The whole point I wanna drill in here with this topic is that there's really no need to go ahead and increase block size to 32 megabytes. And we can see that the major case I think they put here was that a limit, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and read the paragraph here, a limit actual block size usage is nowhere near, but Bitcoin Cash devs believe the network can handle 32 megabytes. Therefore, to allow more clarity and certainty for businesses, they are increasing it now. So this is basically uh, for the concern of businesses. So the, their main objective is to stick to what they want be a peer-to-peer -peer digital currency and I get that I like the motive it's my real reason I'm behind Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies guys money is great but I gotta tell you all I'm really excited to see this actually getting adopted by stores but I have to say the Bitcoin cash dev community which I've heard is building up and as we were talking about with Jeff Garzik and possibly Gavin Anderson coming in this could be good for Bitcoin cash I feel, however, that unless I'm missing something, the dev community is really missing out on where Bitcoin Cash should be growing and developing. It doesn't take much to increase block size, and it doesn't need to be implemented right now. Businesses aren't worried about block size getting clogged up right now, at least at the moment with eight, megabyte, uh, eight megabytes on the Bitcoin Cash network. What they are worried about, and I can give a great example, is privacy implementations. 
This isn't so much a push for anonymous transactions, but being able to make transactions on the Bitcoin network where even though on the public ledger we can validate that a transaction is true, valid, and agreed upon in a consensus method on the Bitcoin network, but being able to mask how much is being sent. There's a good reason for this. If you think about this, and I can tell you I've had many people, whether it be my family who are getting into cryptocurrencies or businesses that I've talked to who have been asked to you know, be able to uh, take cryptocurrency as a form of payment. They're very worried that when someone makes a transaction with the network, if they know the address of the company, they can also see all the other business that they're doing, all the money that they're making. And for larger companies that are publicly traded, that information needs to be confidential until quarterly releases. Along with that as well, some businesses might not want people to know how much money they're getting from business, whether it's $5 all the way up to hundreds of thousands of dollars if it's a business to business deal. So. Because of this, the privacy feature of transactions is very important. It is very important for businesses. And I think that not only have I heard a lot of dev, uh, dev teams are working towards this who are building peer-to-peer -peer digital currency applications, but, but Bitcoin Cash could be the perfect solution for this. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Sorry, my throat's a little sore here. But I hope you see my point in this sense. And I hope that Bitcoin Cash developers who, again, are going towards that same moral objective I want to see Bitcoin serve as, as peer-to-peer -peer digital currency, that they would go out of their way to try to add these features that Bitcoin doesn't have, or at least the Bitcoin core team um, isn't working towards. So that's my real kind of big case here with the uh, coming, upcoming fork on the network. And I really just want to drill my point across that really there's no necessity from at least what I can see to increase block size. Now, I want to talk about another thing as well, because I understand uh, as much as Roger Veer does not lead the charge on Bitcoin Cash, that he is a prominent figure for both the cryptocurrency community and specifically Bitcoin Cash. He is a large proponent. He makes it known. And I got to say that there has been some really poor decisions in this case in regards to marketing Bitcoin Cash. Okay, Again, one of the cons that I see right now in the Bitcoin Cash community that I think could be better done, and that is uh, the controversial manner of propagating Bitcoin Cash over Bitcoin and confusing a lot of individuals. So. As you guys probably know, you probably don't need me to dive through the article. Uh, Roger Veer owns Bitcoin.com, and on Bitcoin.com, there has been a recent supposed lawsuit from the victims of the website where they have been misled by an action on the website where if you go through, I don't know if it, it's not on this article, I apologize. It's uh, on the article over here, yes. Where basically uh, there was a list of crypto current, uh, a list of currencies and cryptocurrencies here. Where if you were to click on Bitcoin, it would lead you to BCH, which in reality is Bitcoin Cash. And then they led you on the second option to Bitcoin Core, which is BTC. Now, to be fair in this regard, to my knowledge, I don't know how the legal ramifications of this are going to work out. Roger himself, however, though, feels that Bitcoin. Cash is Bitcoin. He's made this very clear. And I know there's, again, no real pure definition as to what is Bitcoin. But it is unfair to say at this moment, at least, especially when people are dealing about purchasing or looking into currencies, that Bitcoin Cash isn't Bitcoin Cash. It is Bitcoin Cash. It is not Bitcoin Core as stated as the original currency. Now, again, in a moral sense, you can stand in defense saying, Bitcoin Cash meets towards Satoshi's legacy. It meets towards what Bitcoin truly was and that it did not separate the, the uh, witness from the transaction, the third component of each transaction in the blocks. That's fine. You can stand by that all you want in a moral sense. And we can have a debate over whether or not SegWit is uh, something that can last long term or is morally aligned with what Satoshi originally had envisioned. But the fact of the matter is, is that not only SegWit works at the moment, that Bitcoin Core, as many people are calling it, is still the original Bitcoin. The decision to decide which one's the original Bitcoin is controversial, but I think not only with the original currency being Bitcoin Core makes it the original currency, but we can see on a market stance that at the moment, Bitcoin Cash is being traded for 15% of what an original Bitcoin's worth. And the determining factor, according to Coinbase and all of the other major exchanges and miners on the network, was that whichever one would be valued at most, that they would label that as the original Bitcoin. And at the moment, it seems like the mass majority of the community has come to a consensus that Lightning Network and second layer solutions is where they want to see scaling come. Now, again, 
I think what would be best is almost the approach Segwit2x was going to take, an increase of the block size, Segwit implementation, and optional use of second layer solutions. Why not? Why not can we reach to that conclusion that both ways of scaling could really help the network and really both ways don't harm the network in any serious way? You know, again, I think that we have to, to really put up aside the, back, uh, the, the petty differences and bickering between both sides. But sadly, I have to say that I've seen a lot on both sides of the plate that there's been a lot of silly controversy. There's been a lot of bickering and no serious legitimate analysis of the plausibility of bringing transparency to the space, making the argument for block size increases on the side of Bitcoin Cash, but along with that as well, uh, being open to... Uh, block size increases on the other side in proposing that it could be great in combination with layer two solutions like Lightning Network and Segwit implementation. But again, this has been drawn through some serious stark controversy. And along with that as well, there's some much larger topics to talk, uh, to talk about, guys. The last thing I wanna talk about, kind of in a negative sense, before I go towards the positive, is that if we go here on Bitcoin.com again, another silly thing on here is the PSA in the top right, where it says Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin. Now again, Roger is intended to his opinion, and I would love to talk with Roger sometime. I'm not here to debate Roger. I, I honestly look up to Roger, comparative to most people in the space who look at him as a controversial figure. He's done a lot for Bitcoin. But I gotta say, uh, stuff like this is just not good on a domain like Bitcoin.com. So again, you guys can go look through it for yourself. It's right there on the website. But I wanna go ahead here and kind of summarize things. As someone who is passionate about peer-to-peer -peer digital currency, I think Bitcoin Cash's community, on a moral sense, truly stands behind that cause. I might be an oddball out of a million people in this space. I really do believe that there are a lot of actors behind Bitcoin Cash who believe in the moral ramifications of peer-to-peer -peer digital currency and making sure that Bitcoin sticks to its message rather than being a speculative asset for investment. But at the same time, I want to make it clear that there's been a lot of wrong decisions, I think predominantly the, incre the focus on increasing block size and not focusing on developing other external features or pushing that off, for example, such as the operational codes all the way to November. It seems like Bitcoin Cash at this moment isn't being taken serious because it continues to prove at the same time that it wants to be a topic of controversy rather than a topic of development in the community, being a product that people can actually use comparative to Bitcoin for commerce. I just haven't seen it yet. Maybe the developer community needs some more time and maybe we need to be a little bit more patient and really focus on cutting out the controversy and sticking to the facts. But that's just my case. I know I rambled on a little bit. Just thought I got some clear points across, guys, and I hope you feel the same way as I do. But if you don't, leave your comments down below, guys. Let's get an actual productive discussion going. Let's stop the name calling. Let's actually get some serious thoughts going, some real debates from, uh, brewing in the community. And again, if there's anyone in the Bitcoin Cash development community uh, or Roger Veer or Jihan Wu or any one of the big figures in the space who would like to come onto the channel, again, Datadash is an open community where we can discuss these things. I don't know everything, and I would assume most of us don't know everything, but we can learn from one another by actually having productive discussion. All right? So without further ado, uh, further ado, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumb up. If you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe if you like the content and the way we approach this as well as other topics but until the next video guys keep the discussion brewing keep thinking freely and i'll see you guys in the next video stay tuned